Imaging the sun has many unique challenges compared to deep sky photography. It's quite a distinct skill set. I've previously covered some best practices for safely observing and imaging the sun, as well as how to process your images. Today, we're going to take a look at how to create a video of activity on the sun. An overview of the process is as follows. Set up and align your telescope and focus on the sun. Choose an interesting feature to animate. Capture a sequence of similar images. Process each image the same way. Align the images together. And finally, convert the images into a video or a GIF. We've covered image capture in detail in prior tutorials. So let's take a look at what's different about doing an animation. First of all, animations are rarely full disk images because at that scale, it's difficult to see any changes even with a very active sun. So you're likely to want to be imaging at F15 or higher so you can focus on a large sunspot and or a prominence. Once I've decided what feature to capture, I use SharpCap and set it up so I'm capturing 500 frames every 15 seconds for at least 60 minutes. My exposure is set for no more than 10 milliseconds. You can play a bit with the number of frames captured and the delay between frames, but I would not wait more than 40 seconds between captures if the sun is active and you want a smooth animation. Let's pause for a moment and talk about alignment. When you're doing visual or single photos of the sun, a basic one star alignment is all you need to get a good result. But animations require the telescope to track very consistently on a small area of the sun for an hour or more without drifting. If you're lucky enough to have an observatory or a permanent mount that is always calibrated and aligned, you're in great shape. For most of us, however, we're setting up a portable mount and literally doing a one star alignment. Even very expensive mounts are not able to be set up in the field with just a single star alignment and achieve perfect tracking. There are several workarounds. First, you can set up the mount the night before, do a three star alignment to ensure it's tracking well, and then park the mount so in the morning you can recover your prior stored alignment. Remember to choose solar tracking rather than sidereal tracking because the sun moves in the sky at a different speed than the other stars do. Another alternative is you can align on the sun, set your sharp cap reticule on a prominent feature like a sunspot, wait for 30 or 45 minutes, and if your mount allows it, align as your second star on the sun again. A third method is you can do your one star alignment, set your reticule on a key surface feature like a sunspot, and then basically babysit the mount and make manual adjustments as required when it drifts. This works but gets old very quickly because you're basically sitting beside your mount for over an hour making tweaks. The fourth method is to get a solar guider. I bought the high node solar guider from Astro Hutech. In my experience, so far at least, it works very well except when the sun is very close to the horizon, when the obliqueness of the sun causes some drift. Even then though, it's a big improvement over no guiding. But once the sun is 20 degrees or higher in the sky, I've not had any issues at all. It sure saves a lot of time manually babysitting the mount. Okay, let's assume one way or the other, you've successfully captured 100 consecutive solar images. The next step is to process the images. What I do is choose an image in the middle of the pack and stack the 100 or so best frames out of the 500 I captured. I found if I stack 50 frames or less, the image is noisy. And if I try to stack 200 or more, I may include some blurry frames that I don't want. I make sure this test stack looks okay 
and then I use the same settings and do a batch auto stack on all of them. I then save them in a properly labeled folder. This is the longest process step, so once it's running you can leave your PC and go do something else for a while. Next I open IMPPG and optimize the settings and save them so I can do a batch process on all the frames. Usually I'll label this folder IMPPG. I prefer to invert the image as this tends to show more contrast and detail. At this point, it's a good idea to briefly inspect each frame and throw out any that might be blurry or otherwise rejectable. Then I use IMPPG to align all the frames. These go into an aligned folder. Then I might use either NAIF or Topaz Denoise and see if either process improves the images. In this example, I use Topaz Denoise but not NAIF. Then I'll use a batch process in Affinity Photo for final sharpening, contrast, and color. I create a macro and then run the batch process with the macro on all the images from the prior folder. Finally, we'll end up with 100 fully processed images. Now we get to animation itself. Here you're welcome to use any of several animation programs or online tools. Some of your options include Windows Video Maker, PIPP, GIMP, online tools like easygif.com, and others. You'll notice some banding in some of my animations. These are caused by Newton rings, which are typically interference patterns between the two etalons in a double stack telescope configuration. It happens when your etalons are not exactly perfectly aligned with each other. Unfortunately, they sometimes don't make themselves obvious until after you've made your video. Some workarounds can include taking flats before capture, inserting a tilt ring adapter before the camera, or simplifying to a single stack configuration. This is an area that I understand, but need to do a better job at managing. Here are some final tips for animations. You can experiment with different frame rates. I find 10 to 30 frames per second gives a nice smooth result. You need to factor in how fast the sun's surface was changing, the spacing and time between captured frames, how many frames you captured, and the desired length of your animation. Sometimes it's not until you finish your animation that you notice a few blurry images snuck through. You might want to go back and pick them out and then redo the video. Also consider where do you want to play this video? Do you want the aspect ratio to fit with social media or a 16 by 9 TV? Animations can be a lot of work both in capture time and post-processing, but when you get a good one it's really worth the effort. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing your future solar animations.